Hello, and welcome back to the Doctors of Device, your weekly dose of cybersecurity wisdom. I'm Dr. B, your host, and today we're diving deep into the topic that's crucial for any organization, big or small, cybersecurity risk management governance. You might say governance sounds boring. Trust me, this is about more than just checking the boxes. It's about building a robust security posture that protects your organization and boosts your team's influence. And here is the keyword, influence. We'll break down step by step the process to help you achieve just that. Let's start with the foundation. Think of this like building a house. You need a solid base, right? So the step one here is to define your cybersecurity objective. Don't just focus on the technical jargon. Instead, align your goals with your organization's mission. For example, if you're an online retailer, a key objective might be protect customer data to maintain brand trust and avoid financial penalties. See, straightforward and impactful. Aligning your goals with the business goals. On step two, you will develop the risk management framework. Think of this as your blueprint. And you don't need to create one from scratch, by the way. You can use established model like the NIST or ISO 27001. And, and when I mention NIST, there are several, right? The NIST cybersecurity framework, to be specific. Adapting them to your organization's specific needs is crucial. Just don't download from the internet and try to implement one by one. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately, because it's that document supposed to encompass and be helpful for any type of organization from any industry. So it requires tailoring. And most technical individuals will just shy away from it because it's not a punch list. Most technical individuals would like, tell me exactly what I need to do. Basically, removing all the critical thinking out of the way is just a punch the list type of thing. You need to utilize that critical thinking and tailor the controls according to your organization. This framework outlines how you identify, assess, and respond to risks in your organization. On step three, you're going to build a cybersecurity culture. This is about getting everyone on board. Regular training, clear communication, and making security everyone's responsibilities are key. For instance, implement phishing simulation to educate employees about social engineer tactics. That is, once again, it's on a job training. Here's the real thing. Would you click? Versus having a PowerPoint presentation or talking about it. Now that we have the foundation, let's move to the implementation phase. And step four here, identify and assess risk. This is like a regular checkup for your organization. Use vulnerability scan, penetration tests, and threat intelligence to pinpoint weaknesses. Prioritize these risks based on their potential impact. For example, a vulnerability in your customer database would be higher and have a higher priority then an outdated software version on a rarely used system. That's when patching everything is not a strategy. But having a strategy means knowing the most impactful systems, solutions, products in your organization that will impact the ability of your organization to deliver on a mission, corporate objectives, and serve your customers and shareholders. Those are critical systems. If they are, have not been identified yet, it's something that IT and the business need to work together to identify those systems. It's not necessarily a cybersecurity function. However, as a second layer of defense, second line of defense, you should understand how they approach the assessment of these critical applications. But once you understand that, set the priorities and start using them for your risk management. Develop here on step five, you're going to develop risk response strategies. It's, it's just not sufficient to identify, hey, I have a risk. But what are you going to do about it? The so what question. 
Here's where you go take action. Implement security controls like firewalls, multi-factor authentication, and data encryption to mitigate risks. Also, have an incident response plan ready to handle breaches effectively because it's not a matter of if, but when you will get hacked. So step six, monitor and review is a continuous improvement mindset. Cybersecurity is not just a set and forget a task. Continue to monitor your security controls, update the risk uh, assessments and processes, and track key metrics like the number of phishing attempts blocked or time taken to patch critical vulnerabilities. That will give you key insights where you need to improve. And finally, let's talk about um, amplifying your team's impact. Remember, I mentioned earlier about influence. So in step seven, you're going to communicate effectively. Regularly report to management and the board, highlighting the business impact of your work. For example, instead of saying we patch 100 vulnerabilities, say we significantly reduce the risk of data breach that could have cost the organization X million dollars in fines and lost revenues. Now, once again, take any of the technical jargon out of the equation. Aligning the vulnerabilities and uh, technical expertise that you have on a day-to-day job and translating that to business language, language and not only business language that align with the business objectives and the mission. Remember, we used a little a- a example earlier about being a retail. So here we are, you're losing X amount of dollars. That is key to have that clear communication. And step eight, collaborate with stakeholders. Work with different departments to understand their needs and integrate security into their workflows. For instance, partner with HR to ensure secure onboarding practices for new employees. And step nine, demonstrate value. Track the ROI of your security investments and showcase your team's success. Did you prevent a major cyber attack? Shoot it from, you know, shout it from the rooftop. Shoot it straight, plain language. And ROI perhaps is not very clear. It's just another topic from another time. But understanding how how your investment is turning into a return on investment. For example, the example we gave about we significantly reduced the risk of data breach that could cost the company X million dollars in fines and lost revenues. Now, the investment that you ask for your organization and the savings that you have demonstrated, that's your return investment. That's one of many. But once again, another day, another topic, uh, ROI. And, and that's a wrap. Remember, effective cybersecurity risk management governance is an ongoing journey. By following these steps, you can build a strong security posture, trust me, and enhance your team's visibility and become trusted advice to your organization. Thank you for tuning in into the doctor's advice, the cybersecurity risk podcast. Be sure to subscribe for more expert discussions on the latest cybersecurity strategy and best practice. Until then.